Here is an important factor when it comes to success in fitness that a lot of fitness people, influencers and trainers, just seem to ignore. Your enjoyment, how you enjoy the workout uh, really makes a difference in terms of results. Why? You tend to work out better, you tend to work out harder, and you tend to be more consistent. Here's a problem. Workouts tend to repeat and they come sometimes can be boring. Now, we're not all about just mixing things up all the time for the sake of it, but a lot of you are looking for workouts that are different or new that you could try every single week. So here's what we did. Go to Mind Pump Media on Instagram and for under $5 a month, you can get a workout every single week. So novelty is great if it makes you enjoy the workout more. Just don't do it for the sake of it. Make sure the programming is right. How you enjoy the workout is just as important as the workout itself. Bro, that's not even the biggest selling point. Uh, what do you mean? The biggest selling point is Justin. Why don't you use him? Oh. <laughs> yeah. He's already the fan favorite. Wow. Oh, yeah, I did that. I did the stupid face thing. Yeah. Who has the stupidest face? All I of know. us. You and I were like, you know, Tied. 40, 50%. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Doug was like 20, like 8%. It's because yeah. you like, you're the one that like uh, put no. it out there, right? Uh, so no. if I would have put it out there, it would have been the opposite. No, I yeah. mean, you do have a dumb face, but they love you so much. <laughs> yeah. No, that's not what's going on. Wow. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I actually, I actually got, I actually got several messages from the subscribers that uh, have already started subscribing. Now he killed it. And they love the voiceover that he's doing. He did, well, so, you know, here's the deal. So Sweet. remember and, when we did that? Yeah, well, I mean, again, I'm kind of ripping off you guys ripping on me when I was the one exercising and you guys were commenting <laughs> like I was on a golf channel or something, which was hilarious. Uh, but yeah, I, I, the intent of it was to kind of give people a taste of our different workouts and whatnot. But really, it was like, let's have fun with it. Yeah, what? well, I mean, look, here's the whole point of this is that and we, we talked about this and there were, this came full circle, right? When we all first became trainers, this is all we thought was valuable. Make the workout entertaining. Totally. Razzle dazzle your clients. And then you realize like this isn't working. They need to train consistently with certain exercises, technique and form. And a good trainer or coach knows how to make those enjoyable as well. Of course, the results follow. But then you come full circle because they say, look, there is a there is value to enjoying your workouts. There is value into trying new things, especially for the average person who's not like super addicted to exercise. And this allows people or gives people this opportunity with because it's good programming. That's that's what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will seek out the entertainment and they'll put together a bunch of exercises in the wrong order or the wrong format, and then they miss out on some of the other values. So you can actually combine these two. Um, and that's, again, that's one of the reasons why we have that is that people will get a new workout every week that is probably different from when they're used to. But is also you know well written. Where where is it that we did the voiceovers? Is that the thirty days of coaching on the YouTube channel? Yeah. So is that still exist? Yeah, it does. Oh, I thought it was removed. Uh, it's three it was thirty days of workouts or, or training. I don't. Yeah. I don't think it's coaching per se. It's yeah, where we have like a 20, 28 or thirty day program that yeah. you can actually go to YouTube. And is it? You can is find it a free there? program? Yeah, it's still on there. What, what's it titled? We have it thirty days of coaching on Mindpump TV. And it, each day is, is listed, uh, but I think we have it on the website as well. Okay. Okay. okay so yeah, yeah. So if you don't want to pay for a subscription, that's another area yeah. that you can use, which I loved when we did that. Yeah. yeah I did. And I love that you brought that back because totally. I, I thought it was fun on brand. I don't know why we didn't stick with it. Do you remember uh, why? We we tried to get all serious and make sure we were more, you know, corporate. And, and it was a nice tight package, like our programs and stuff, like, looked a certain way. We brought the marketing team in. You're right. And You're, they that's kind exactly of muscled right. us out, You're which right. is fine. But that's why I wanted to bring it back. Because, like, I, I don't know, in the beginning, I fuck guess. fuck them, right? Yeah, fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> fuck the marketing <laughs> people and corporate right. people. You're the you boss. Know? Yeah, exactly. You're the, You're the boss. Uh, my <laughs> idea is uh, I'm just going to push them through. So from now on, you're right. That is exactly you're right now. Because I was like, man, I really like that. We all did, but you, you, we were catering to our you know, consistent listener. It fan just wasn't base. a good timing. And it, well, it was. They were trying to make us more commercial, commercially accepted. And honestly, that never worked for us. Yeah. yeah, we never we especially not me. We're I mean, like I can't the sit there and just seriously do this. We're like you know? the worst people. Like if for for someone from the outside to tell us what we should do. Yeah. We're so bad. I know. It's like, don't tell me what to do. Yeah. And I don't want to unhirable. Yeah. And I'm yeah. gonna do it like this or whatever. And in our space, especially because what you're what works in the fitness space oftentimes is the opposite of what we want to do. Like before and afters, those are like they crush. They mm -hmm. crush. I was crushed. You show before and after, you're gonna sell products. 
we hate before and afters because it, it emphasizes like body image stuff. Well, that's or, why I have or a thirty day challenges, stuff yeah. like that. Right? Yeah, that's why I have a really hard time taking these calls that we tend to do, Doug and I, especially with that people that want to critique and do an audit on our business and then tell us all the areas yeah. that we can improve because there's like, have you guys tried a 30 day challenge? Because when the fitness space, there's like a bunch <laughs> of these go-to moves that everybody does yeah. that we just, I'm aware of, we just, yep. we choose not to do it. We all agree that that's not how we want to, yeah. you know, but you know, business. back to the original point, you know, it's, it's, we've said this before when somebody would come up to me and ask me, what's the best exercise for blank or what's the best way to work out or what's the best form of cardio. I would always start with, well, what do you enjoy the most? Right, because mm -hmm. it's you're more likely to do something consistently. Right, if you're you can adhere it. to it more. Yeah, yeah, and like, look, you could do you know a workout that's not super great, so long as it's relatively appropriate and doesn't hurt you, because this obviously can be a bit extreme. But if it, it, so long as it's okay, if you do it consistently, it's going to crush a, a great workout that you just don't follow because you don't enjoy it. So, well, some, isn't this isn't this where you guys would find yourself conceding in an argument or debate with a person over CrossFit? I mean, this is where I would concede. Yes. So, if sure. I was talking to somebody and trying to explain to them all the better ways to achieve their goal, like they're like, oh, "I want to lose but this fat." Is really, I love it. And yeah. and, and then, but they would say that like, "I love it though. I love the community. Totally. And I've never been so consistent." Then yeah. I get that's where I stop and I go, you know, well, here at the end of the day, like yeah. here's much, prime at least as much as I can yeah. tell you that there is a better way mm -hmm. to achieve the goals you're telling me about. If at the end of the day you tell me you love it and you're more consistent doing that than you are anything else, then that trumps trumps my science. It does. And yeah. and there's an asterisk there, right? Which is the better way is only better if you do it consistently. Otherwise, it's the worst way. <laughs> it doesn't do anything for you if you can't do it consistently. So that's at the top of the list. And let's be honest. Um, if we could figure out a way, and this actually, this is where we, um, I, I guess we all shined later on because we figured out that this was a, 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 a solution to the problem. If we could figure out a way to make the average person find real value and enjoyment out of being consistent with activity and out of eating healthy, then we've solved all the, we've solved everything. I mean, yeah. I think 95% of the obesity epidemic and health issues right there. We built that, a new association with it that, uh, you know, it, it drives them because it's something that they enjoy now. Like it's, it, and that's kind of the thing about hard things. It's like it, the the part that that transition of being able to look at it differently and not as just this hard thing that's like, you know, it it it's it, you have a lot of resistance towards like stepping forward into doing it. It's more like I enjoy doing this now because I've built that relationship. With yeah, it. and and for people who are like, yeah, right, no, 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 like there's people that do things that just objectively suck, like a cold dip. That objectively sucks. Then people develop a relationship with it where they they tell you, I love it. And you mean you, mean you feel comfortable doing it? No, no, no. I don't feel comfortable. Yeah. I just love it. Um, so you can develop this relationship. That's got to be the most important thing, right? And, and some of that is novelty and trying new things for some people. All right. Today's giveaway is the Super Bundle. That's a lot of programs. Here's how you might be able to win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel, turn on your notifications, and if you win, the Super Bundle will let you know in the comment section. Also, only one day left for our May Maps special. Check it out. Maps Prime, Maps Prime Pro, and the Prime Bundle, all 50% off. Again, it's going to end in one day, in 24 hours. So if you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below or go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and use the code MAY50 for the discount. All right, back to the show. So that leads really good into this question that I wanted to bring up. So Cassie, every once in a while, will email me if she's kind of like stumped on how to res respond to somebody that's emailed into Mind Pump. And uh, she sent this over this morning to me, like right before we got on right now. And so I haven't had a chance to answer her. So I figured I'll just bring it up to you guys and we can answer it on the podcast mm -hmm. since I don't think we've talked in depth about this. So this person is emailed in, they're in phase three of uh, MAPS Aesthetic, and they're concerned about the programming because they have recently gone to this company called Self Decode and is the DNA testing to tell them strength training. So this is the email. Oh. Also, I've worked with a practitioner who has run my DNA through a Self Decode program. Based on my results, it doesn't look like I should focus on strength training, but on power-based training. I attached the report. Please keep this report confidential, so we're not going to share it. It's pretty cool that I can drill down like that. So my question is, is there a program with Mind Pump that would lend to that type of training? The practitioner thought maybe pushing through the rest breaks and not doing anabolic 
more like a circuit training, but I know this isn't how it's supposed to be done. Thanks for your help. Okay. First off, the practitioner doesn't know what power is because that's not how you <laughs> yeah, train power. The circuit isn't power. Second, uh, they either didn't understand that the test or the test, whoever created it, didn't understand what they were writing because power, you do strength training to develop power. Power yes. and strength. It's the pinnacle. Yeah. They're, they're, they're I mean, they're, they're, Brothers and sister, right? They're like super closely related. So I'm looking at. So again, I'm not going to share this person's name or any yeah. like real. So they, they has a has a pie chart and it says your optimal training type and it has strength, power, and endurance. Those are the three options. Okay? That's so interesting that they separated strength and power. Yeah, I know. that's weird. Well, yeah. that's kind of typically in the old school four quadrant thing. So we used to separate the four quadrants of strength, power hypertrophy endurance is how we like we used to separate it's so category. weird how they strength they, they they separate those because you're kind of splitting hairs a little bit now power is just strength with speed yeah it's accelerated strength yeah but they're so closely related and so that what does that mean that the person only does plyometrics and fast strength training movements there isn't a power athlete in the world that doesn't do traditional strength training so sure. i'm going to guess that this is broken up similar to how this quadrant that i'm referring to used to break it up it was one of my national certifications can't recall which one it was but that i remember teaching off of this and you had so let's just use they only have three so i have, I have a pretty good guess of what it looks like so strength would be basically five repetitions uh of of what so one to five and in you be focused like in, traditional strength training. Yes, so. yes. No, excuse me. I'm backwards on this. Power would be one to three rep rep ranges and then long rest periods. Strength would be five to eight, a little bit uh shorter rest periods. Endurance would be, you know, 10, 15 plus repetitions and very short rest periods. That's how they would run. Now, this person's pie chart shows uh 15% strength. 55% power and 30% endurance. So this person is basically the, 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 the coach is telling them, Oh, they should focus more on power and endurance type training. So I, I want to shit on this in several ways. Yeah. Here. There's so, a lot of different ways. Though. So uh, even if this was very <laughs> a a accurate yeah. and true to this person, uh, this idea that your DNA lends itself as a, if, and it is this person's power. So let's pretend I actually wrote uh, her a very specific, very good power program that we followed consistently for the next three to six yeah, power months. cleans and snatches. Yeah, I mean, yeah. just, it's a very good power specific to that. Right. And we follow that for three to four months. The idea that continuing that same program for the next three months, because your DNA test says that versus me transitioning you into a strength based program or endurance based program now is re is ridiculous. Her, it would be it, that, those, that new way of training is, is so much more novel. Her body's now adapted to that power training we've done. So this DNA test is irrelevant now. It, like It's also like this though. It would be like somebody coming up to me and without asking them any questions at all, I'd look at them and be like, Oh, you're built for basketball. That's what you're going to do. Or, Oh, you look like a swimmer. You should swim. Cause you could look at, I could look at somebody and I could definitely tell, mm -hmm. tell you what sport they should be better at based off of their morphology but does that tell you anything about what they enjoy, what their goals are, and also the body what are changes? their prerequisites? Like, is their body frame even like a, a adapted and strong and stable enough to produce that kind, generate that kind of speed and power? Yeah, look, strength the, strength training comes with its risks. If you add speed to that, you just multiply the risks through yeah. the roof. So, so power training should be reserved for somebody who's already got that stability there. And there's value there. There's definitely value there. But it's weird to me how they separate yeah. it. The two, like, like, what does that mean? They never do strength training. They should only do it 15% of the time or whatever that well, was. Well, that's the part that I think is interesting is that, you know, it doesn't matter what this thing says. If that person follows this and, and then sticks to that, what the DNA says, oh, you were made for power. So yeah. what are you always going to train no. in power because of that? It makes no, it also, makes no that, sense. That's also a snapshot. Okay. So this is your DNA, but sometimes you're tired. Sometimes you're stressed. Sometimes your diet's good. Sometimes it's not. There's so many individual variables and lifestyle yeah, factors. It's just way too generalized. Super general. It's like, yeah, it, and it here's, hurts that, my brain. And that's why it's going to direct people in the wrong way yeah. because somebody may read it, think this is the answer, ignore everything else, and end up going in the wrong direction. This is such a classic example, too, of how we get like, like you know, new cool technology that gives us insight or something. And then people, all of a sudden, people love when you put them in a box. It's like, oh, that's me. 
You well, know, yeah. like it's the same thing with the uh, uh, somatotypes. And, yes. You know, and so you put some generalized like, oh, you can relate to it on some like really small level. Yeah, yeah. And then it's just going to uh, categorize you and like give you all these traits and everything else. Here, here, here's what happened. Associated with it. DNA testing uh, became, it got so advanced that it got to the point where we could do it for a relatively good price, right? So 20, 30 years ago, you couldn't do this. Now yeah. you can go get your DNA tested. And there's some data to show that certain patterns um, will, you know, correlate or connect to certain things. Okay, so that's definitely true. But what the commercial market did is say, how can we sell this? That's yes, right. Yeah. Oh, a great way to sell we have, this. We is, have this uh, eight thousand dollar machine. How do we? Yeah, how do we <laughs> pay yeah. for it? Well, here's Seriously. how we can sell it. We can tell people based on their DNA, so sciency, your best diet, or hey, based on your DNA, here's another one. I bet you this exists. Send us your DNA and your partner's DNA, and we'll tell you if you guys. Uh, should be together if you're a good match based off your sign to your DNA because yeah. DNA means that you're compatible or whatever. Like there's so many factors that go into all this stuff that that, and also we don't have like the greatest understanding of we do with certain, with, with certain genetic diseases. It's as valuable as horoscopes. Yeah. <laughs> no, a little more valuable. Than that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, know, I'm trying to throw shit. You horoscopes guys. go pretty accurate, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it depends. Mine, right? Who's right now? Yeah, mine seems to be pretty spot on. You, know? you want to know what's weird? Like, oh, so, ooh, that's eerie. So I'm Aquarius, right? And whenever I read a uh, like a description of Aquarius, I'm always like, God, that does sound like me. But then I remember something, and I wonder how much of a, how much this played a role. When I was a kid, you know, your mom decorates your room when you're real little. There was a I had this like this like picture, and it was like Aquarian, and it had all the traits underneath it. And as far back as I can remember, I would read it as a little kid. Mm -hmm. Now I wonder if I like just identified with that shit because it was on there since I was a kid. Right. So I'm like, oh yeah, I am those things. Yeah, and that, I just, that's me. Literally went in my mom's house and she had like, I went through some old stuff and I saw it and I'm like, oh, I remember this. I wonder if that's Well, isn't there, what happened. isn't there- And a, how can I hack that what's for it, Like kids? not phenomenon, yeah. but what is, what is, there's a uh, a term for that where like, th th there's a strategy to why that it does work because they choose X amount of like positive, positive things yeah. that are relatable that like, there's a there and they do enough of it. It's like, oh, okay, well then, oh yeah, I connect with that. Yeah, that's yeah. me. Or oh yeah, it is like, well, if you look at all of them and read it that way, there's you could see that you'll find a few in all of them that way. So it you confirms know you, that bias. You ever mess with people? So I had this. I used to have this trainer that worked for me that was all into weird stuff. And this was kind of a mean thing, right? We were doing. We, we used to talk a lot in my wellness studio, like amongst each other with our clients. It was like this family environment, really small. This was kind of mean because I made her look stupid. So we were going back and forth. And I said, so you think it's accurate? She's like, yes, it is. And she's trying to talk about it. I said, okay, I'm going to read yours and you tell me if this, if you think this is what happened or whatever. And I read a sign that wasn't hers on purpose. She's like, see, that's so me. That's so me. I'm like, that's weird because it's Taurus <laughs> and you're a whatever. <laughs> she tried to counter. But How my, mad was but she? But my rising moon well, was it's in this, It's the thing where, you know, when you get a, um, when you, when they say when you, this is, this is the same thing I'm trying to explain is when you get, uh, you buy a new car. And then you, then you, you all of a sudden you see it all the time. Yeah. It's not like they're all of a sudden driving. They were always there. Yeah. But now your subconscious has now become aware of it. And so now it attaches it to that. So it's yeah. the same. It's the same. Now, you know happens. that there is some, this is interesting. Now, the time of year you were born may have some influence on your DNA expression because it was either more sunny. There's certain nutrients that are more or less accessible, or you're more or less likely to be exposed to certain viruses, depending on the time of year. Mm. So that could influence you. So it's like, oh, I'm I was born during the winter months, and this tends to happen with people who are born during the winter months or during whatever. So I don't know. Here's something I, mm. I don't know if this is true. Doug, look this up. Um, that the majority of the people in the American Hall of Fame are Aquarius. I think it was. I think I'm just trying to make myself. <laughs> wow, well, I'm an Aquarian too. So, yeah, 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 yeah. It makes I, sense. See, you know what's yeah, going on. It makes a lot of sense. Adam's a Scorpio. Aquarius. Right? The, what the American Hall of Fame? American Hall of Fame. I think it was like a majority of them, or majority pretty much the smartest like people else I heard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. the most humble. No, very humble. <laughs> yeah. Didn't you say you always identify with yours? Yeah. Yeah, because it's just because you have a cool Scorpio. Sign, it's always like, like, like passion. Can't help it. Yeah. You poison people with your. Believe it or not, you're right. Now I knew it. According to the guild, there are more Aquarians Unfortunately, we're in the American right. Hall of Fame than any other sign. Does it say what percentage? It doesn't. It's a big percentage. So, so tell me that. Dang, tell me dude. how weird that shit is, bro. That is. 
You, did you say aquariums? No. Aquarians. <laughs> <laughs> Is aqu- aquariums, yeah. There's, <laughs> there's a lot of aquariums in there, huh? There is. <laughs> Someone needs to edit like it's all my face or Justin's. And there's a, <laughs> it's just yeah, a fish tank. It's a fish tank and <laughs> Shamu. Dude, dude speaking- I, I read something that I thought was interesting. Um was really eye opening. Now, after I read that, I kind of went down the rabbit hole of like trying to confirm it. And there's definitely a, like it's one of those survey type of studies or not studies, but surveys where they break down a percentage or a time or numbers of the average person. And so it varies where you get this information. But nonetheless, they were all lower than I would have expected. Do you know what the average FaceTime you as a dad you spend with your your child a day? I mean, on average in America or whatever. Mm-hmm. So like FaceTime meaning you're with your kids. Yeah. And uh, what I'll add to that is that this excludes bath time and cooking. Hmm. hmm. So pull those two out of the equation and then just Six, interacting, minutes. playing, talking, teaching. Any, per day. For a day. Per day. 60 minutes. Yeah. Under 35. <gasps> wow. That's terrible. Yeah. Now, are they including dads that aren't present and all that stuff? Does that skew the shit out of the numbers? Or are these is this no? Like it was, only a, dads it was, were it was uh, yeah. They were they were asked, they were asked like uh, the survey right. took like a, a, how, how many hundred dads? Listen, you know what though? I'll tell you what. So we're lucky now because we've done this and we all get home earlier than well, most I, people. This is the point I was making, yeah, you guys. Yeah. That like it really. Well, we just talked about this the other day on the podcast. How much I, and I was inquiring about you guys is early your 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 young kids and when you Justin when you had yours yeah. Because you guys had to work bell to bell. And I'm like, right. I can't imagine. Like, I trip out. We have like one day a week here sometimes where we work a little later than four or five o'clock. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I get home late and like Max is already eating dinner and getting ready for bed. And I'm like, oh, I, I can feel like, oh my yeah. God, I missed out totally on that time. Out. Yeah. And I'm like, holy shit, this could, this is, could have easily been my life where every day I missed out on that. So yeah, I just thought under 35. And then you talk about the role of the father, right? So yeah, I mean, it, Obviously, having a father in the house is better than not having a father in the house. But boy, it's when you think of stats like that, it's only a tiny bit better when you're only spending that minimal of time on influencing him. Yeah, I know. It's Gosh, crazy. Just think about it. The average person would get off of work at what five, right? That's the average, right? Nine to five. Yeah. Most people probably get off a little later. Then you got to drive home, mm-hmm. so you're probably home by yeah, say six, six, six o'clock. Yeah. Little kids typically in bed by eight. At the latest. At the latest, Max right? Max is 7, 7.30. Same, right? Yeah. It's for yeah. me, right? So 7.30, 8 o'clock. So you get home, and it, between then and then, if you're not with them the whole time, I, that makes sense now. Well, and for us, the the the, the pattern is dinner at, dinner at 6, 6.30 bath time, 7 to 7.30 reading. Yeah. So it's, I mean, yeah. you're literally... You would, I mean, I, I guess I could slide in for just reading time or whatever like that, but I mean, that it's you just very, very little time if, if you, and that's a saying you have a nine to five, which a lot of people work a lot later than five o'clock, you know, or have a major commute they have to do. But, and the, the and then here's the hard part that I, that I think is important for us as parents, all of us to just always think of and be mindful is you see uh, st- uh, research on that to sh- show like how little we make like actual face time on that. And then you see that what it says as average screen time for kids, oh. you know, now you're in the hours. Yeah, where are they really getting the influence? That's right. Yeah. And so who's raising your kid? Yeah, right. Like, so, I mean, there's nothing you can do about a dad who's got to work at seven o'clock every night. Like it is what it is, mm-hmm. but there, there is things that I can do that when I am present and I am around and am I choosing to allow him to sit in front of the screen when I already have minimal time with him? It, and so I want to make It takes sure. work, man, because I, it does. Look, I get it. Look, I get it. working parents, right? You come home and you're tired. You're, you're already spent. You work. It, you work is hard, probably. And you come home and you're kind of spent and you want time for yourself. Right. So it's not. And here's the, here's the thing that I think a lot of parents, you start to figure this out sometimes too late. It takes effort. It's not like a, it's like a relationship with your spouse. Oftentimes it takes effort. It's not like it's just, oh, it's so easy. It just works. Like to, to be there with your kid, oftentimes you have to be like, do like, oh, I want to relax, but I'm not going Listen, to. Listen, one, of the, one yeah. of the reasons why I waited so long to be a dad is because I was very aware of how selfish I was as a person. And it is the most selfless thing you will ever do in your life. Period. Ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nothing will ever even come close to what it's like being a parent on, on the level of selflessness. I knew that. And I knew I was a selfish person. I was okay with it. I, was a, yeah. I didn't have a lot as a kid. And so I'm doing it all yeah. now. And I want all there now. And I'm going to do what I want. And that was my attitude. Yeah. And I knew that I couldn't do that simultaneously 
while having a son and and we i would be because then i would be with that every night i'd be like well this is my time yeah, I, you yeah. know, I want to watch this. this i want to do that yeah, yeah yeah it'd be about me where it's just like i, I that doesn't even cross, about me doesn't cross my mind yeah, no. these days it's no, just, we've been going through like a decade of you know being there with the kids and raising them and all that like you go through a period of like well, when do I get to do something that I that really builds and grows me individually outside of just me coming to work and then providing right. and the, like how do I fit that in and and like I went through all that with like trying to give back like my justification was I'm giving back to the community I'm I'm helping like these kids and fostering these kids like through through the means of football and I'm like I, this is like yeah. something I used to be able to do well and I can like establish that but I just felt that disconnect between my own kids yeah. it was like brutal because like i'm like oh i'm doing all these good things and like uh, i'm getting i'm getting involved in in this and that but and i thought maybe they'd want to come down and hang out but it's like it just turned into me like parenting everybody else's kids listen yeah. listen i this this really hit me first of all what we're talking about i have a very unique perspective because i have four kids with a huge age gap in between the first two and the second two and i'm gonna say i heard this all the time and I experienced it firsthand. That time, it once you lose it, it's gone, and it goes by fast. It doesn't feel like it when you're in it because it's 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 a grind and it's tiring, and there's like lots of stuff going on and stress, and the house is a mess and all that stuff. But I promise you, it goes by so fast, and then it's gone. And right up until they're about 13, that's where you're going to spend most of your time with them. After that, they get more influenced by their peers, by you know, like I said, their friends, stuff like that. And the older they get, the less you see them and the less you have that influence. And the relationship you have with your kid, you have to think that, well, I mean, hopefully you want to have a lifelong relationship with them forever to where you get old and they come over and they want to be with you, whatever. That's how you build it. Well, mm -hmm. statistically, that's unbelievably low. Was it one of you who brought that? Very low. I had not heard what it was. But after the age of 18, like the amount of hours or days that a kid spends. Well, think about this, yes. like in, not to throw anybody under the bus or whatever, but like think about, you know, I use myself as an example. I love my family, love my parents. But when I want to talk about things that are deep and I have challenges and I want to whatever, I don't typically, and my parents are extremely supportive. We just didn't have that relationship growing up. It was much more of a like authoritarian, you know, do this, do that, obedience type thing. Yeah. If you do that with your kids, when they get older, they're not going to want to hang out with you. Mm -hmm. And that's what you want. You want your older kids when they're adults to like yeah, they on wanna, their own to want to come by and, and hang like, out yeah, exactly. rather than like, Oh, I got to go visit my dad. Yeah. Like, visit my mom, <laughs> you know, type of deal. So yeah. Yeah. Like they're paying lip service or something. Yeah. You know, so it's but, funny. It's an, it's, that's an, also an interesting conversation and thought for someone like me, who one of the things that drives me crazy about Katrina's family is how much they do that. But it's also the same thing that gives me that appreciation because I also see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see there, I mean, Katrina is the baby of the family, right? So she's got brothers and sisters that are in their mid fifties. And I mean, they, we were all together on Sunday. We were all together the Wednesday before that, the week before, like, and they, and then if they want to do anything, they always want to do it all together. Or if they have an issue and if like someone struck, someone just had a breakup or something has going on or someone had bad grades at school, like the whole family gets together. And it's like become, it's yeah. like a, they all confide in each other. And it's like, and it drives me crazy because I'm the opposite. I grew such a distant family. And yeah. so it's just overwhelming for me. It's like, yeah. man, once a week is already a lot, like <laughs> yeah, two, three so times a week. And like, do we have to involve yeah. everybody? Or Plus can you we, didn't can, develop that with them. That's right. Specifically, that's right. right. So I've had to work on that. Yeah. And, and now, and now as a father, it's become a lot easier because now I really see it. Right. Having a kid really changed that perspective. See, being not a kid, selfish me was just like, what the yeah, fuck? Why yeah. do I got to do this? I don't want to. I don't want to do this. I'd rather just you and I go do something. But now, as a parent, I have a different perspective and I'm like, OK, as my, and, and you and I, I don't know how, how much Katrina even notices or not. But I know like there's times now where my natural gut instinct is like, no, I don't want to go over there. I, I want to stay home and yeah. relax, watch the games in the comfort of my home and stuff like that. Like it's playoffs right now. But I actually go, let's go. Let's go over there. I want to go awesome. because. I know like how important that's going to be as he gets older and yeah. so that, and I already see how much it's helped me now as a parent. That's you know? awesome. And nothing changes your perspective like that. There's this, there's this like talk, I don't know, it's this clip and I think it's Jordan Peterson that's saying it. And he says, you're, you have this opportunity when you have a child to develop the, the deepest possible relationship you could ever develop. And then he says this part, which always gets me when I hear it. He says, and the, the cool thing about this is your kid wants that. Hmm. All your kid wants for any parent right now listening, you know this, all your kid wants is to develop the best possible relationship with you. And they will do anything 
to do it. They'll literally do it to the point where, I mean, there's shitty parents out there whose kids still come to them because that's all they want. Like where else in life are you going to find someone like that with that potential, right? So um, it definitely is challenging, but it's it's super worthwhile. I mean, along those lines, I would tell you guys something kind of cool that I started doing. I've been, you know, obviously Jessica and I have been reading a lot about parenting or whatever, and she's like a fanatic about it. So I love it because she'll share information with me. And one thing that I'm doing is, or I'm trying to do is, whenever my my little one is playing, my tendency, and I think this is a, par- a lot of parents have this tendency, is they want to go over and structure the play or organize it a little bit. Like, no, 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 do it this way. And here's what happens and try this. But this particular article I read said, let them do their own play. And the way you engage with them is you comment on it or let them lead it. So I've been doing this with Aurelius. I'll sit, we have a playroom and I'll sit in there and I'll hold Dahlia, right? So she's only six months old, but I'll have her sit up. So she kind of is watching and I'll start it off and then I'll, ha- and then he'll go off and do his own thing. And I won't say anything. I don't care what kind of mess he makes. If, unless, as long as it's not dangerous, I'll let him do whatever he wants. And he makes a massive mess. I mean, it's like literally turns the room upside down. But as he's doing this, I'm commenting on it like, wow, you threw that really far. Oh, you just wanted to see that fall off the table, didn't you? And he laughed. And I've been watching him. And he has a blast Uh doing that versus what I used to do when I'd be like, no, no, don't do it that way. You shouldn't throw that. That's not for throw. Here, do this over here. and Control, 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 control. Totally. (laughs) It's like, just let them do their thing. Just let them play. And watch them and, you know, have a good time. So Yeah, Max, I told you guys that he the the iPad thing, like the Angry Birds thing, right? We've, We've removed that. It's been great. And he doesn't even notice it's gone. But what I what he does is he acts out the game with <gasps> his toys. Isn't that great? Yeah, it's wild. way better. So he yeah. So like now, like he'll be like, and what's really cool too because it has. It's not like he hasn't ever asked again for the iPad. If I'm home and he does that, like I'll tell him, well, let's go play Angry Birds, you and I. And so he knows that I, that's like where we play with his jingle blocks. He builds the towers up with the jingle blocks, mm-hmm. and then he puts the little guys on them. And then he, just like the Angry Birds game where they shoot. The oh, birds. he throws it over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then, he well, can, that sounds fun. Yeah, uh, no, he does. He, awesome. he builds the. He stacks them up, and he, this is like I did not teach him any of it. This was all on his own when we removed the game. He started to it, play it out with his toys, and he used the jingle blocks to build the little towers up like they have, and then all the little pigs are in there, and then you shoot the birds, mm-hmm. and then he throws <laughs> the other toys at him, and then and it's like, oh my god, dude, dude it's so funny. But it's funny. give them that space to create those things, and they, and also they just will. know you're going to be tired sometimes. You just got to kind of like like there's games I play that often when I'm tired where I'm on the ground. So I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, we're going to play. The game is I'm laying down and you get to do it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because I'm tired, man. You know? I'm going to chase a two-year-old around the house. No, you know what? Of course, I think that's the most important. I think that's the most important thing to communicate is that it's easy when you, I mean, most people, most dads love their kid, right? It's not like, and want to play with them. It's the times when you're exhausted and, or you're stressed. Or they want to play something that, let's be honest, like you have a little kid, they oftentimes want to do the same shit over over and over (laughs) and over. And you just like, really, we got to do this again. Do it. Dude. Yeah. My dad hack with that was like, I, I actually bought like a old school CD player. And so we would go to Streetlight Records or we'd go wherever and I'd let them pick out like in the classic rock section, something that they'd want to listen to. And then we would put that on. I'd make sure, of course, like, you know, oh, this one's probably the best, you know, it's like Led Zeppelin or like, you know, Cream or something, you know. And so I'd put that on and then we'd just build and, and play Legos to like, and we'd listen to the song and see if they like it. And then we'd switch it out. And it was just like a little bit more, instead of it just always being the same thing over and over, it was like an added thing. You cool. both just reminded me of a memory that I had that I couldn't wait until we grew out of this phase because I made the mistake of doing this one time. And to your point, Sal, of like they just get stuck on it. Like it was right around, he was around and really his age i pulled him in the closet one time and he had this it was, this is like when he was getting into flashlights turning flashlights on and off and i took him in the closet closed the closet so it was all pitch black and then i took the flashlight and held it up and i like spun it around like a dance party He's like, yes. i was like dance party dance yes, party. Dude, oh dance my god bro he loved it so much it was just like every day i had to go to him like oh my god so talk about being like exhausted not wanting to play it's like i gotta <laughs> so be in there funny. dancing around spinning a light around in the dark and like fuck dude, dude that's one of the first it's not a go. minute the or dancing? two oh yes you ever like yeah. so that was one thing too yeah because it gets self-conscious embarrassing at a certain point right like 
Because my kids, too, it was like any song came on, we'd be walking out in public downtown Santa Cruz or Start like Disneyland or whatever. They're just, yeah, just going for it. And they, they wouldn't want to leave. They're just dancing still, <laughs> like a bunch of like crazy hippies. And I'd like just stand there, but, yay, you know, like, like cheer them on. And, and meanwhile, I'm like, okay, let's go. Like, no, 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 no. You know, I just kept going. Bro, I could not wait till he let that one go. I was like, was, I created a monster with that. And then you do. You just got to, it's all he wanted to do for like a good six, seven months. <laughs> it goes dude. away. That's the thing is that you people like appreciate it. Yeah, yeah a, dude, because it does. Window. It does change. Like I saw this other. There was you know, that's other, what motivates me, though. I'll tell you, right? Because I know that. Know that like, I've seen go it happen enough there. times now, and when I'm as a part of me is like, there's going to come a day when he never wants to do this again. That's true. And I tell myself that when I'm like, I don't want to be doing this. Yeah. I don't want to be doing this. <laughs> <laughs> like making a little noise. I'll with never get to do this again. That's what I tell him. I'm never going to get to do this again. I read this one. There was this one post I read where this dad. I guess this little girl was like super. She was like three years old, super defiant and whatever. And the dad wanted to be very disciplinary, and the mom says, "Don't, don't crush her fire. Don't, don't, don't yes. beat that at her. She's going to yes. need that." And she said this to the dad. She, he, she's going to need that one day. And I was like, "Oh yeah." Mm -hmm. Like, how often do we try to like change something about a little kid because it's loud or annoying? You're like, "That's first off, they may never do that again. So enjoy it." And number two, what am I crushing? Mm -hmm. What, what are they, what are they going to potentially not develop as an adult or <clears throat> be insecure about as an adult? Mm -hmm. You guys know. Uh, you guys saw, we talked about it on the podcast, and I think you all saw the Zuckerberg winning the jiu-jitsu tournament, right? Yeah. Oh, right. Did you hear? No. Oh, that it was rigged? Well, that- No, what? He lost, and then he made them redo it. Wait a minute. Yeah. Wait, I did, did he hear that? that, but I didn't know if that was just like I, wait, folklore. How, how could he do that? How could he make them redo so, it? So- well, I mean, he has a lot of money. Was there like a penalty or something that he <laughs> So that he, he complained so much to the refs. After they, I mean, they already awarded the other guy. Winner. No way. Yes. Winner. And then you see Zuck like arguing with the ref. And then I guess they redid the they, they restarted the tournament after after the fact. And then the second time that you won. Look it up, Doug. I had no idea about so this. So there may have been so without watching the video, sometimes stuff like that happens where, where there's a couple judges, they see something the other person doesn't. So hopefully it's something like that, and not the fact that he's Zuckerberg. I mean, it sure looks like in the video. I mean, you have a situation, you see that you see it, and you see him raise the other guy's hand, and then you see Zuckerberg turn and he's like Pleading his case. Dude, I have to say this. Having competed in both judo and jujitsu, jujitsu tournaments sometimes can be so political, it's actually embarrassing. Like, mm. I competed. So, is it for the same reason as, like, how bodybuilding is? Is because the schools that yes. are represented yes. there are also the ones that p help sponsor yes. the, the events. And yes. It's still, yeah. it's still point driven, it's the same right? Game. So it's like, uh, you know, well, all, you can, all, these metric, all these things are like that. You know, yeah. I, I bet you gymnastics is, and you don't even realize it. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. people that put up the money Bro. For these of uh, these things to happen, but my I had know that there's in that there's a huge there's incentive. wiggle room in there to manipulate. Okay, but I, that's how times, bodybuilding yeah. was just like yes, that. Yes, there's wiggle room, and then there's obvious ridiculousness. That happened to me in a tournament. I really? sh I competed in a tournament, and my last match was from a, was a guy that went to the school that was hosting the tournament. He you have five I think it was five minutes to get to the mat when they call your name. If you don't, you automatically forfeit. The guy showed up. Okay, two hours later left showed up two hours later they let they had us do the match and that's like look i wanted to go against them and i ended up beat him anyway yeah but i remember thinking like if that was me bro it was like my, my first them. show it was so crazy the crowd booed yeah. booed the judges because wow. i it was so obvious i was so ahead of everybody well, else that's especially that and that's then so they don't even call yeah. me out on the first top five and the whole crowd booed and then wow. you had judges and other people coming up to me yeah. and talking to me it was I so mean, and then this was, can then, happen in any sport if you think about it because i mean even when i was coaching little league like for instance and we were like on our way to get into to the playoffs there, one of the umps I found out later was a father of the other team. And so kept calling like obvious strikes balls. And, and then they loaded the bases. And then there was one play towards home where the kid like threw it at home, got him out, and he called him safe. And they won the game. Uh -huh. And everybody was like, are you kidding me? And I'm like yelling at this guy's. Dude, it was so obvious. <laughs> yeah, I was going to murder him. <laughs> that's so, so Did I tell you that one time? Okay, so I was like third base. Like I was doing third base coaching, and uh, I think it was Ethan was running around the bases, and then uh, they were throwing it in from the outfield, and it got to like home base, and he didn't know because he was like, he, I forget how old he was, but he was young at the time, and he kept running. Like he was going to run to home plate, and they had it at home, and like, I'm like, no, get back, get back. He was like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I clotheslined him. <laughs> 
and it was like just a reaction. I didn't like think about it at all. I was just no. <laughs> <laughs> and then he falls down. And then he like went right back to the base. And then only a few people saw it and they were dying laughing. And no, and, like I didn't get any kind of like penalty or anything for it, but I totally like obstructed. <laughs> that's yeah. that's hilarious. Yeah, Whoops. So Dude, I met so my my cousin, uh, she just graduated uh for, I think it was Sac State. Um, and she, I mean, what, what is the highest honor? It's not magna cum laude. It's the one summa higher cum laude. She graduated with that. So shout out to my cousin, Bella. She crushed, um, <clears throat> hardworking girl. Anyway, she introduced me to her boyfriend and, uh, she said, oh, he plays, uh, he plays. And I knew right away by look, by, by looking at him, what position he played in baseball. Cause this kid's quads were like this big. I'm like, he's a <sighs> catcher yeah. for sure. Uh-huh. The kid's sitting in uh-huh. a stretch Just sitting there, quad there. position and his quads are like, that's a hypertrophy. Dude. I mean, besides strength training, yeah, you yeah. sit in a stretch like that, have oh, to support yeah. yourself, you're uh, going to have big ass quads. Big quads. You're yeah. going to. It's going to yeah, yeah. destroy your knees later on in life. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, speaking of sports stuff, I actually heard uh, who was who was interviewing Stephen Kotler. We haven't had him in a long time. That's on the a show. long time ago. And uh, I actually heard, I, I don't know if you knew this or not, but he, he talked about flow being an evolutionary trait. Hmm, have probably, you heard that? Uh, probably. So the, 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 the theory. I've never heard that, but I would agree. Yeah, the theory is that it's the evolutionary trait of mastery. Hmm. So uh, when you've you've mastered a set you've built of- built all that to where now it's in your subconscious. Yes. Yeah. And that and so that is like, was the, you know, evolutionary reason hmm. for keeping that. So, I mean, I would imagine that like there was obviously some sort of mastery and throwing a spear and doing so, practicing it so much, chasing an animal down that you become so like- that's where I geek out on all the cultures that like that was their thing was like, so you go like samurais or, or like you like where they it was just about perfection and like whatever the the craft was that was beneficial for the tribe you know like that was what they just hyper focus on every single day to perfect and and I don't know there's something beautiful about that yeah. oh it's it, you know there's only been so many times in my life where I can like truly recall. Like what I think is like the purest form of flow state, and it's yeah, yeah. Let me ask you: When you have you guys felt that? So snowboarding is the most I have felt it. So there's really? time. Oh yeah, when you're where you feel like you're not even thinking about what to do. I feel happening. I feel as if I my my board and me are one with the ground. Yeah. So wow. like it's like it's you're and you're flying at like to just a top speed and you just there's you no little hitch or anything yeah it's there's no, there's no wobble fluid. there's no yeah. any you just you're, you, you're just acting yeah. yeah I mean I'm listening to music I'm thi- and I'm like enjoy I'm like in in it in such the mm-hmm. moment that you just you feel everything it's such a and in basketball too so like when you get and mm-hmm. this is group flow when you get with a group of guys who you've been playing with for years and years you, you know just all know where they are you know their tendencies you know how they react when someone does what a, certain, a great feeling and 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 yeah. then the, and, and but it, it's and you only get moments of it so it's not like the whole game is like oh just because i play with these guys yeah. forever we feel like we're in flow you, it gets in this where it just everything up. is seamless yeah you're all synced up so those are there's and there's only been moments i feel like in basketball where i felt that and snowboarding has been more more times uh-huh. but it's I can I can only imagine that's what it's like for when we see these crazy things like these skiers who hit these jumps and they're like spinning six times. You're like, how in the fuck can you do that? Yeah, yeah. that's not that's not reaction. That's just yeah, action. that is not at all reaction. They yeah. are 100 percent in in it in the moment. You know, what was that one sci-fi show um, that um, so it. I'm trying to remember like what the name of it was, but like basically what I'm getting at is the concept of group flow where they actually engineered it. So it's like everybody had like a chip that they were like nearly linked up to each other. And it's like, they, they were like a, a special force. Yeah, I was say that was a special force yeah. test. That was, um, I did see that. Yeah. What was that? I don't it was know. just a cool concept. Cause it was like, yes, you know, you already get there naturally by, uh, being under extreme stress and like everybody's like collectively working towards the common goal. Mm. Uh, and that's the way that you can achieve group flow. That's but another great, like, another great. So the higher, so the higher the risk too, the more likely you are to dip into that too. Yeah. So that's why these crazy extreme things, they force you into that same thing with like, you're talking about like seal teams and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. They'll talk about, and I think stealing fire, rise of Superman got into this because they talked about the seal teams, 
But like they don't even train. There's not like uh, like the guys just. There's no communication. They just know if he goes this way, what he's supposed sure, to do. Sure. So you you think there? I mean, they, they obviously they have their they hand, have signals hand signals or that. But yeah. But there's just like you've trained so much with this guy is that if he reacts, he reacts a certain way. You know just what to do. Then this person knows what to do, and it just it flows as one unit. Mm -hmm. And they practice that. They and obviously it's a life or death in their situation. So their ability to get deep, deep into that flow state. I is, felt flow with you guys. Uh, creating, with a creative program. Creating program. Oh. Right. I felt that was prime was prime. the most I felt that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I felt flow with you, Adam, on a podcast once where you forgot what you were going to say and you started coughing <laughs> <laughs> to cover it up, and I went right into. You like, knew exactly. What he I know oh, there was no. Yeah, just yeah, went yeah. right into like just. I'm not. That's a good point too. There's been yeah, moments of like it. Uh, I can feel in the in the podcast. Yeah. I felt it a lot in sales presentations in the past. I've yes, that, that yeah. too. Where I'm with other people and we're presenting and. You know when to shut up, when to talk, the angle, and how mm -hmm. to you know overcome an objection and work together. I mm -hmm. felt that before mm -hmm. doing that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's a cool feeling. Yeah. I mean, I think it's like it's like connecting to. You probably feel it. I would imagine. I'll ask you this, Justin. You probably tap into this when you go to a concert and everybody's mm. super into the band or the, the music time. and Big everybody kind of connects. Everybody's right? enjoying the same thing at the same time in yeah. the same place. It's like, yeah, it's it's powerful. Now, there has to be a negative side to it because that's got to be mob mentality, right? Uh, yeah, Where, because you can manipulate people in that yeah. state, right? Yeah. Like, uh, And that's kind of the scary dark side of it where you see things like uh, Woodstock, uh, uh, two, when was that? 90, 99 or six, nine, or something? yeah, something like it. We're stuck in 90. So, yeah, so everybody sort of collectively, it was like in the air where there was like this destruction and somebody starts it and then somebody that's else it. thinks it's funny. You know, there's got to be something else that's there also, though, with music because music is also a form of communication and language for us. And so, oh, music, they, that's the, part of why you're getting like music like, is one of the most effective ways to get people to feel the same thing. Yeah. You want to get this, everybody to feel the same emotion and you want to do it effectively. You could do it with speech, you could do it with imagery, but music is one of the more effective ways. Yeah, this would be an interesting conversation with Kotler is to ask him that is if like, because I feel like there's something more there. Because like, you're not you're not taking a bunch of basketball players, snowboarders, mm -hmm. other sales guys that we're talking about all the other forms of flow and manipulating them because they're in flow. But the music one, you're right, you could and you do, but I think that's because less about the flow, them all being in flow together and more because of this is like this, what music does to the brain. Well, music's powerful. It, mm -hmm. I don't even think we fully understand why. First of all, why the hell is music value? Like, so weird. And it has to be in every movie or like there, there has to be it in the background. Otherwise, have you ever watched like a movie without the, the soundtrack? Bro, watch a it's sad so or cringe. happy or inspiring. Well, isn't it like the, the isn't it the thing that like Disney hacked into first? Yeah. They were like the first Probably. ones to do that. Have you ever watched like a great Disney documentary or something that they always have like the orchestra yeah. going behind and stuff like that? And it's it's so weird when you don't hear that in, in other shows. And it, it, I mean, it takes away from it. Yeah, it does. No, yeah. it's very powerful. It accelerates learning. It lights up the entire brain. And it and you want to talk about memory, if everybody knows this. You want to remember something, you put it in song. Yep. And it it's a crazy hack. It's a crazy hack. It's weird we don't, the kids at school don't aren't taught more of that. They are taught some of it. You sing your yeah. ABCs mm -hmm. or some things that we use songs. You know but. why? Music and sports and art have been taken out of education because they've been considered not important. Oh, Mainly because- So smart. Stupid. Sit <laughs> down, memorize, shut up. Philosophy is another learn. one, right? Philosophy taken out. like Mainly because- people without knowing any better just assume like what is this this is not really oh it's well-rounded big deal this isn't important we need science technology math you know you know maybe english and that's it but the truth is taking those out makes kids worse at everything else yeah. mm -hmm. and you don't develop uh certain yeah, skills well-rounded no fully like philosophy like don't you wish kids were po got got these questions posed to them and they mm -hmm. got into discussion and debate. I was talking with Jessica about this last night. It's how you figure out what you actually believe. You know why things get so polarizing these days? Because nobody practices this particular skill. Think of your the opposing opinion and can you argue it better than your opponent and can you understand where they're coming from? Nobody does that. If you did that, you would have less polarization. You'd have mm -hmm. less of this insanity. Yeah. You'd be like, here's the position, take this side, take that side. See if you can argue both sides effectively. I mean, yeah. worst case scenario, it's going to happen. You'll argue your side better because well, that's the only it. way you even find truth. Yeah. If you don't have any kind of counterpoint and you, you don't have that discussion, it's just fed to you. And, and, you know, you're just, you're just literally influenced by one narrative, one bias. This is how I answer uh, fitness questions to people a lot. 
Because many times you can argue both sides yeah. of a question that we get. And I normally will start that with someone who's asking the question for me is that by arguing with, I can argue both sides, but here, let me explain to you why I lean more this way. Right. right. So like I could, I can make the case for the other way too. So whoever's selling you on this idea that that's mm -hmm. what you should do, I can make that case too. Mm -hmm. Like I could, I could convince you by telling you this, this and that, but this is why I lean this way. That's mm -hmm. I start that conversation a lot of times like that when talking to somebody about fitness. Dude, speaking of hacks, I gotta tell you about another hack I started this morning. So you guys know the studies on like getting sunlight first thing in the morning, yeah. what it does for your health, your circadian, circadian rhythm. rhythm. Mm -hmm. It's got pretty profound effects on things like anxiety, depression, and it's such an easy thing to do. The problem is most people get in their car, drive to work, get to work, and that's it. Right. And so <clears throat> I, I was talking with Jessica about this yesterday. And I said, oh, I opened the sun. I, I just opened the, the the shade to the sunroof. And she goes, take open the whole sunroof. Some of the UV rays are blocked by the by the actual window of the sunroof. And you're not getting the wind and the air. And I'm like, well, what if it's cold? She's like, that's good. You want that discomfort. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. So that's what I did this morning, mm. 6 a.m. I'm driving to go work out, open. And I, you know, you turn the heater on if it's too cold or whatever. And it felt so different. Yeah. It, was a, it was like, a, what a great way to get the mm. day started we'll by driving with the whole window open at the top. I do that all Everything's the, coming I in. I do that all the time. Every morning, in yeah. the morning? Well, part, partially too. I mean, if it's not raining, Because right? I want the, I want the I sun on my head. I do it on a cruise, but tan, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's, <laughs> <laughs> so that's part, part of it, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, good. it's good for my psoriasis. It's I, good. I need the vitamin D like that anyways. But yes, I've, I've observed that, that it does feel so much better yeah. to do that. So I will even, if it's cold, I'll run like the heater in and then yeah. keep, keep it open. I'm like, just that I fresh air away? blowing on you like that too. Yeah. So. Justin, I know you got a long commute, you know, give it a shot. Yeah, no, I will for sure do that. And I've, I've felt the effects that if I'm on like a long drive, it's usually when I'll do that. Or if my dog is like with me and I'm taking him somewhere. Cause like, it's always a funny thing is I'll have like the, the truck and then it'll open that up. And his big old head is through there. Everybody oh, freaks funny. out. Yeah. Dude, speaking of feeling things. So the other day I can't help myself, right? If I see a supplement or something and it's you know, a little, little interesting, I'll be like, I want to try this. So I'm at the gas station of all places to get, to try this. And gas stations now sell CBD products like crazy. Have you guys seen this? Yes. At the, at the register. Yes. That's when you know it's like gotten too Bro. ridiculous. Dude. So they had this like CBD. Right there next to the boner pills. Right next to them, right? So by the way, those boner pills, have you guys seen the studies on those? No, no. Okay. They like, <laughs> they're, they're mostly Viagra, right? Like it just sprinkled They'll in They'll have there. illegal pharmaceuticals in them. Oh, wow. Half of them. These they're herbal. They're selling them now. Yeah, dude. And they'll <laughs> put in like. Traces of meth in there. Yeah, yeah weird shit. Probably. Man. Anyway, don't take boner, gas yeah. station boner don't pills. Don't do it. But it said CBD, and I think it was 20 milligrams, which is a good dose. I know what CBD feels like at that strength. So I bought it. I took it. Nothing. I felt nothing. I, I have to say, the majority of these products that say they have cannabinoids probably have nothing in them whatsoever. Nobody checks. Nobody cares. It's all about the, you know, the, the trend or whatever. It's They're, they're garbage. Oh, uh, I, I mean, I would... I would say north of 90%. And the reason why, and unless, unless you, or maybe you're a more uh, optimistic person and, and you have more faith in humanity and you think that more people, most people who run businesses have lots of integrity uh, because it is a space that is not regulated at all. There's lots of opportunity to cut it or mm -hmm. make it not make as, your margins bigger. Yes, because yeah. it's very, expensive to source, and very, it would be very, very difficult for you to prove. Okay, without some sort of random third party testing, and so, and you could still pass it off. It's going to smell the same, yep. look the same. There's so many things about it that the average person would not be able to tell. So yeah, no, I mean, and it, it, and of course, greed is what drives most of these people. So. If I could tell you like, oh, you could, you know, leave 15 to 25 percent of the plant matter in there. It's going to make the volume of that two times more, reduce your costs by 50 percent. Uh, so basically take your business where you're making a million a year. Now you're making five million a year and it just cost you more money. What would you say? Yep. Yeah. I Who's mean, not? I mean, very few. So, so very few people are, are, are taking that path. And this is why. And I have. As you guys know, I have a lot of my family members taking Ned. Most of them had tried CBD products before, and they all said, oh, I've tried that. Yeah. It doesn't work. Didn't get CBD. Really much effect from I'm it. like, try this. Let me know what you think. And they all come back and they're like, oh, I feel this. I didn't know you were supposed to feel it. Oh, no. God, they've really ruined the market for cannabinoids. Like, you you take something that's really got cannabinoids. I'm not talking about THC, but just actual, you know, the non-psychoactive cannabinoids. Mm -hmm. And you take an effective dose, you'll know. You're not going to, you should not be sitting there after you take a CBD hemp oil product and be like, do I notice it? Do I feel it? You'll feel it. You take Ned, take a dose that's effective 
and give yourself about 45 minutes. You'll know you took something. You, mm -hmm. f you feel it. You feel the, the slight euphoria. You feel the enzyolytic effects. You feel kind of good, yes. looser, less pain. Like it's, 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 it's pronounced. my go to. I really start feeling like, uh, you know, especially if I'm getting tired at all. I know like my anxiety is starting to kind of build up. Like it's, it just helps me it's to a, relax so much. It's easier. a great, I took it this morning. I don't normally take it in the morning time, but I did take it today just because I was like feeling a little anxious from the caffeine that I take in. I love it with caffeine. Oh, yeah. Great it's combo. a great combo with caffeine. It gives me that similar like theanine type of feeling yeah. from it. Yep. Yeah. It settles it down. It settles, settles it. You still get the up feeling from the caffeine, but then it minus it, either the, the jitter or anxiousness that you get with it. That's right. That's yeah. right. Do we have any shout outs for today? I, I have a, I got a shout out. I actually I read this book a while ago. I saw Doug reading it in one of his stories. Uh, Chris Voss never split the difference. We get a lot of coaches and trainers that ask me about like sales training and sales books. And so that, that's a really good um, book. This art of negotiation and stuff like that. And uh, w even though I've, I've read similar, similar stuff in other books before, uh, it's very well written and it's entertaining and very, very informative. And so if you're in sales or you, awesome. or, and even if you're not in sales, I, I think the, the art of communication and the, the form of being able to win a debate or an argument is valuable for other people besides just salespeople. I think that everybody I've, I have found that skill set to serve me in many other pursuits other than closing just a, a sales deal, you know? Check this out. There's very few products out there that actually help you sleep faster and better, but we found one of them. It's called Sleep Breakthrough. So this is a pre-bed drink that combines the power of magnesium with other natural ingredients like valerian root. Again, helps you fall asleep faster, stay asleep longer, and gives you a better night of sleep. This stuff actually works. Go check them out. Go to sleepbreakthrough.com forward slash mind pump. Use the promo code mindpump10 for a discount. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Brian from California. Brian, what's happening? How can we help you? How's it going, guys? What's up, man? What's up, dude? Good to have you back on, man. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks again uh, for the, the help with the last time with the symmetry with my football team. Uh, just to give you a little update, we went uh, 10 and 3, went to the semifinals, and uh, we suffered almost no injuries. So, wow. The, with the symmetry stuff was awesome. Awesome. Hell yeah. It works. That's fantastic. So Justin, Justin, what you share with me, man, that was, that was, that was really, really epic stuff. Rad. Yeah. I would love to, yeah. Offline uh, discuss more of that and like how that's worked out for you guys for sure. For sure. But, uh, this time I'm calling in for myself. Uh, I've kind of hung the whistle up. Uh, my daughter was born on the 13th of this month. And so now I'm running around with a 17 year old stepson. I got my almost four year old and now a brand new baby girl. So I was, uh, I was in the middle of doing symmetry. I finished phase three, and now I've jumped into maps 15 advanced because uh, there's no time. Uh, you, got, you guys know Sal, you're crazy for as many kids as you got. Yeah, it wasn't uh, purpose. We tell them that every day. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm whipping through these workouts pretty quickly. Uh, I'm hitting like 20 minutes, and that's with a 10-minute priming session. So like most of my workouts are like 10, 11 minutes long. I'm taking the minute in between. So I'm wondering, is there like a focus and intention that I should be doing? I know Adam talks a lot about tempo. Like, where should I be at with the MAPS 15 advance to kind of get the best bang for my buck? Okay. Well, are you getting stronger with it? I'm, I'm in today's day one of week two. So um, give you an idea. I did the bicep, uh, the deadlifts and the bicep curls. I did 225 um, last week, and I was kind of tanked at the end. This week, I'm a little bit better. It was I wasn't as tired at the end. And then bicep curls are bicep curls, so but nothing crazy. Yeah. If you're getting stronger, I, I would just stick to what you're doing. I mean, you could add an extra exercise. I, I would do that occasionally. When I ran through the program, yeah. I would add sometimes an extra exercise at the end. So rather than doing two, I'd do a third one. Or I'd okay. add an extra set or two, depending on the lift. Like if it was a deadlift, I would add a couple sets. But okay. if you're stronger, if you're getting stronger, you're on the right track. Because our tendency okay. is to keep is to continue to add volume until we hit that limit. You don't want to do that, especially when you're when you're not getting great sleep. Yeah, I think it's. I mean, I think it's beautifully laid out uh, for somebody who just wants like has a time right now with a newborn wants to just kind of maintain muscle and and stay strong throughout that process before you can really ramp it up again. But I did the same thing too. Like so, I I used the the foundation of how it's written, and then like I I like to focus on rear delts. I like to put some focus on calf work, and so you know, I if it was a day I was feeling good, I had some extra time. I'd throw little exercises in there like that to complement the, the the core uh, exercises that were in the program, but I wouldn't deviate too much from it. I think it's I think following it to a T is is pretty ideal. 
Okay. Okay. Um, kind of a follow-up question to that since, uh, I know it's nine weeks and hopefully, uh, baby girl is sleeping a little bit better by that point in time. Um, where would you go as far as programming goes from, uh, an advanced maps 15? I, I have everything. Uh, and I literally mean everything except for PED. So where would, where would you want me to go or where would you suggest me to go from, uh, the advanced 15? All right. Well, two, two things I'll say, you're probably not going to get better sleep in nine weeks. Usually it usually takes a little longer than that, <laughs> <laughs> but let's say, let's say you're one of those lucky people. I mean, maps anabolic would be a good follow up. Um, you know, maps performance would be a good follow up. Any of our core programs yep. would okay. be a good follow up or you just keep running maps 15 until you feel like you can move on to something else. And then the second or third time around, you like, I, like I said earlier, you can add a set or two or an exercise and add a little extra volume. Yeah, you have a lot of you have a lot of options here. You could follow the fifteen slowly, add exercise into like Sal just uh, uh, recommended. Uh, if you've been through most of our programs and you and you have a pretty good idea of all of them, this is also where I like to kind of mix and match some stuff. So mm -hmm. I would love seeing you like an anabolic inst and instead of maybe like a, a heavy focus, maybe light focus with mobility. So maybe take okay. a little bit of a performance, yeah. uh, the mobility movements that probably help you the most. You know that better than anybody. So add that into your routine and then maybe touch up some muscles that you want to on focus days. Um, so st something like that. So I, I, you could do an anabolic and in, in the trigger, excuse me, not focus days, trigger days on your trigger right. days, do more of a mobility type of a, a focus with some trigger workouts. Yeah. Just look at something you would normally never gravitate towards. Cause if you have all of them, we try to at least like put a lot of options out there for, you know, more endurance focus, more, uh, you know, just pure like powerlifting, um, you know, something in that direction where it's like, I wouldn't normally like venture there. And, and maybe that's something that'll stimulate your body in a new way. So yeah, but don't be surprised, Brian, though, if, if following maps 15, you start to see yourself going up in strength, uh, even higher than you might've in the past. I mean, you've been working out for so yeah. long. If I recall, you've been doing the this frequency for a long time. of it's everything. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. I've, I've been lifting for a long time and then I've been listening to you guys since episode 25. Yeah, so I mean, I, I wouldn't be so, like I hit a PR in deadlifts, kind of following oh. a format like that. Like, and that was a PR that I had in that I did in my early 30s, and I hit it uh, following something like that. And so, um, don't be surprised if that lower like your body needed something like that. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, good. Well, job. I appreciate it, guys. You yeah. got it. Congratulations, by the way. Yeah, 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 man. Thank you, thank you. It's a rad shirt, by the way. Yeah, I like that. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah. I like your bedroom, by the way. That's a cool uh, bed. Uh, this is my garage. This is my this is my hideout. It's the only place I have this. Wake up and lift. <laughs> hey, that's true, man. The more kids you have, the less pl places are yours. Yeah. So don't yeah. don't lose the garage, man. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, I'm not going to. <laughs> All right, brother. Hi, Brian. Thank, thank you. Have a good one. You too. Thanks. Yeah, it's uh, you know, it's people often, especially advanced people, they 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 get surprised by cutting the volume down. They progress all of a sudden. Yeah. You know, they do it with the intent of like, well, I got to do this so I don't lose anything. But then they end up discovering like, oh, this is what I needed. Well, that's the usually time. the button they they don't even think to push. <laughs> exactly. You know, right. A little bit less. Yeah. Well, even the sign of his second week already being in or the second phase being in there and feeling better. I mean, that's, I mean, that's it. People yeah. have to remember too, like uh, progress looks different. It's not always just this uh, adding weight to the it's bar. No. Like that, yeah, yeah. It's being able to accomplish a workout, feeling better after doing it. It's, uh, you know, energy levels being better. You're, you're being able to maintain a lower heart rate. There's so many other ways. You're better stability, better... I mean, so many other things that are that are showing you that you are progressing, even if you don't necessarily put more weight on the bar. Our next caller is Tyler from Idaho. Tyler, what's happening? How can we help you? Uh, thanks, gentlemen, for taking my call today. I wanted to uh, ask a question. Um, I'm big into the MAPS programs and uh, your show. I think I've been listening for five years and I haven't missed an episode. So thank wow. you for, for yeah. your time and all your wisdom. Oh, man, Thank you. Um, so usually I'm 42 years old, um, over the course of probably like the last four or five summers, the majority of my summer has been doing, uh, Matt strong. It's probably one of my, my favorite programs top to bottom. I've really enjoyed the, the novelty in it. Um, I'm just finishing up week 11 in maps anabolic advanced. And so I'm looking like for my summer training block, like, um, switching it up this year. Um, and I want to get back into like Olympic lifts, looking at like snatch, cleans like I, maybe it's just me i'm 42 years old i feel like i'm missing some of that quick power and stuff i want to try mm -hmm. to to keep it as long as i possibly can um so my quite and i'm also a, a certified athletic trainer and a strength and conditioning specialist so i know a lot of times 
you probably don't prescribe those for normal people, but I feel like my technique's good enough that I can do it consistently without without getting myself hurt on that risk reward. Um, when looking over the summer, um, what program do you think like those power explosive movements fit best in? And then like, how can I? Do you recommend any changes as far as like rest times, reps? Like, I'm not really looking to do a one rep max. I'm kind of too old for the risk reward, so maybe like a three rep rep ma- three rep max. Um, but just any suggestions you guys had for over the summer would be great. Yeah, Justin, I'll defer to you because yeah. I feel like you're, you're going to be able to answer this better. Yeah, so right? performance, and then I believe it's phase three, but uh, we're focused a little bit more on speed power in that uh, phase. And um, what I like to do, because this is definitely a concern I have all the time, is to be able to move quickly. Uh, and I think a lot of people don't really consider that as they age especially. So um, I'm right there with you. One thing I'll do before that, though, is I'll work with the kettlebells a little bit more because I have more control and I can get my body organized to move, you know, quickly and explosively with a lot less risk uh, with that. And then uh, once I get my body to feel like it's it's at that level, um, if I go to program it in, say, phase three, you'll see there's moments in there for like a, a, a high pull. Um, and so I would like swap those out for like a hang clean and you can do that. Um, you can even eliminate some of the exercises within the workouts in order to make sure that, you know, you can focus a little bit more exclusively on that specific lift in, in the mobility days too. Like I would, I would go basically the bar if, if any weight at all, and just work through those, uh, you know, the mechanics of it. Do the mobility workout itself, but then also add that as like a skill training day in a sense. So that that would be something that I could at least like continuously work on it and get the reps in uh, to relearn and reteach my body that uh, the overall like function and power of it. What do you think, Justin, of him pulling things like uh, I, I know we have like Zercher squats in there. We have front squats in there, like maybe swap, pull, those, swap out. those out for like clean yeah. and jerk and snatch. Exactly. And those like- would be the ones I'd probably target just because you are. Uh, pretty heavy anterior loaded, uh, you know, when, when you're focused exclusively on um, power clean. So. so then basically you could follow performance the way it's laid out anywhere where you see things like Zercher stuff or front squats. Or, that's just, where, or even the hang cleans especially. Yeah, or hang, clean. hang cleans. This is where I'm going to put your, your clean and jerk, your snatch, put those exercises in there. And then like you were saying on mobility days, that's where you go like just bar and you're doing like, you're just practicing the skill just yep. to, with mobility stuff. Yeah, just adding frequency Not- to your... Now, Tyler, in terms of like rest and stuff like that, if your your goal is to build, to work on speed and explosive power, long you want to rest as long as is necessary. So you want to rest so that the set you do is maximal exertion or maximal mm-hmm. power. You don't want to train these to fatigue. This is not like, uh, you know, a workout where you're trying to build, um, you know, uh, where you're trying to get the waste byproduct to build up and lactic acid and whatever. You want to rest as long as you need so that you can go out and maximize each rep. That's how you train for power. Otherwise, it's going to turn into like a stamina workout. So the opposite of CrossFit is what you're telling me. Yeah. The complete <laughs> opposite. Yeah. The complete you said opposite. it. You oh. said it, not us. Yeah. 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 Although we yeah. said it. Focus on the skill of it. That's It's a lost art right. these days. Yeah. 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 Do you have and then as far, go ahead. Oh, as far as the, the clean snatch and jerk, would you guys recommend – specifically looking at one of those each time or trying to do hit all three throughout the course of the week. Oh, through the, I mean, I wouldn't do more than one of those in a workout. Yeah. Yeah. But, you but do on different days. There if you, you go. wanted to do that. Yeah. If you want to split those out throughout the week and, and alternate the days with those. Yeah. That's why I brought up the front squat Zercher. Cause I, I, I'd have to look at the program. I don't have it memorized. Right. But I think if you literally just pulled out all of that and replaced with those three movements, you could probably follow it the way it's laid out because yeah. we, we separate those. We would never do a front, a front squat with the Zercher yeah. on a Zercher squat day. So those right. would be, so you could probably or like a push press, Ty- you know, you do a jerk there instead. Tyler, you know, are you, are you looking for overall better explosive power and speed? Or are you also looking at get, getting better at those Olympic lifts? Because probably both. That. you can, you can avoid the Olympic lifts or, or needing to practice them so often, but still develop speed and power. I mean, I think this summer, what I wanted to do is the Olympic lifts. Like I, I do pretty good. I've been consistently training since a lot of like you guys since I was like 18. So like I've, mm-hmm. I've stayed in pretty good shape. And so now I'm just trying to get that, that power component back in those lifts. And okay. like hang, hang cleans were always one of my favorite things, like mm-hmm. being an athlete and going through everything. And so I'm just trying to bring those back to the forefront and, and okay. kind of bring something new into my workout. Yeah. Okay. In yeah. that case, yeah, they're, I would do I would, valuable lifts. Yeah. I would do one each workout. 
basically. Okay. Yep. All right. Good deal. If you don't have, do you have performance, Tyler, or do we need to send that to you? Oh, I have a bunch of your stuff. I use them with my athletes all the time, so I I, oh, I kind dope. of pick your guys' brains throughout different stuff with my own athletes. So you're basically you know, it's like sharing your password on Netflix with everyone. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I bet you don't have that. You since you are around a bunch of athletes, we just wrote an advanced bands program that I think would, would complement some oh, of the stuff yeah. that you're doing. So. That would be great. So we're gonna send you so we can give you something. We're gonna send you the new maps bands. You didn't buy it yet, did you? I did not. Okay, uh, there you I go. Have maps. Prime and Prime Pro, so Adam doesn't yell at me. I've got those for like four or Good five man. years. So. Yeah, okay. we'll, send, we'll send you Maps bands. Yeah, we're going to send you Maps advanced bands. You're going to like that, man. All right. Thank you, guys. I appreciate your time. You got it, man. All right. All right. Thanks. Yeah, so for people listening, Olympic lifts are great for building power, but the challenge is always the technique and the skill, which is why we don't recommend them to most people. But yeah. He knows the technique. He understands how to do them, right. in which case they're great. But if for the average person. you spent the time, yeah, learning it. it and being proficient in that lift, it, it is a valuable lift. And, and again, that will reduce the risk of injury and all that, but now just receive the benefits. But it, it does matter how you program it because totally. it's, very, it's very technical. Well, what's neat is that because the performance is laid out so nicely, I'm pretty sure every day, the, you know, the three days a week of the foundation of lifts, he can replace the movement that's closest resembling whatever explosive yeah. movie he's doing and just get rid of it. Yep. So like you said, the push press would go out of one day, the yeah, Zercher squat would go out of... Yeah, so yeah. there's like literally a movement yep. in every performance day where you just drop that out and then put the Olympic lift in there and you probably have pretty solid programming mm -hmm. for somebody who wants to get proficient at those lifts with yeah. the combination of the practice days with mobility. Mm -hmm. Nothing like a good snatch. Mm. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Our next caller is Tobias from Ontario. Tobias, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey guys, uh, before I ask my question, I just want to say thank you for all of the amazing content. I first uh, got into your podcast back in 2019 when I listened to uh, Living 4D by Paul Check, And so I went to go check you guys out and uh, I noticed you had so many episodes. So I went in um, to your old episodes and I had a lot of catching up to do. But um, nonetheless, you guys and Paul Check have both changed my life. So I just want to say thank you for that. Cool. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Uncle Paul. Uncle Paul, man. Yeah, man. So um, I'm 23 years old and I've been a personal trainer for two and a half years now. And I specialize in holistic lifestyle coaching through the Czech Institute as well as strength training. And my question is in regards to protein intake. So I'm currently working split shifts at the gym from Monday to Friday. I usually start at 6 or 7 a.m. until 12. Then I start again from 3 to 4 p.m. until 7 or 8 p.m. So I decided to start fasting for about 15 to 16 hours. And my first meal is around 12 p.m. And then I take a protein shake with fruit, healthy fats for dinner while I'm training clients around six. So my protein intake for lunch and dinner is around 60 grams uh, each, which means that I'm getting about 120 grams of protein per day. I don't track my calories much. Uh, I've tried in the past, but it seems to overwhelm my mind. So um, and I'm also I also have my business, my astrology business through my TikTok that I'm working on in between my split shifts and on the weekends. So, um, nonetheless, I, I, I've been successful in gaining muscle in the past by just tracking protein and adding meals as well. I currently weigh 172 pounds. Last summer I was 180 when I was doing maps aesthetic. Um, I ate 170 grams of protein per day and I gained 15 pounds of muscle. Wow. I still feel really strong and I'm able to lift the same weight, but I'm not as muscular as I used to be. Um, I performed a PR, uh, about three weeks ago. Um, while I was fasting and I was able to lift the same weight. So I hit uh, bench press at 245, deadlift at 405 and squat at 315. And I just started MAPS symmetry um, to balance everything out because I was doing MAPS powerlift at the time. Um, my gut health is something I need to work on as well. So I've learned that I can't have too much lactose and, and wheat, but I do enjoy eating whole foods and I don't want to eat protein bars and packaged foods throughout the day like most personal trainers. And I see them having so many energy drinks throughout the day and like, I don't know, like as a personal trainer, I feel like you should represent what health means. And I just see them like having all these issues with their adrenal glands and stuff. And so I do want to bulk up, um, but I just don't know if this might be like the right time. So I'm wondering what you guys used to do during your split shifts as a personal trainer. And if you guys have any tips on that, um, and maybe it's just, like I said, not the right time for me to do it. So yeah, I'd love to hear your opinion Tobi on that. Tobias, you don't want to know what we did. When we were <laughs> yeah, trainers. we weren't. <laughs> I yeah, mean, we were drinking speed we stacks better, all day yeah. long. And yeah, no. All right, look, it's, there's an easy fix for this. Um, uh, first, let me ask you why you're fasting. Why are you fasting till 12? Um, I found it's just easier for me to 
to kind of essentially just like keep up with my health. I found that when I was like, what I was doing before is I was eating really early at like five in the morning. I wouldn't eat during my, my shift as a trainer and then I'd eat at 12. So I just found my food was all over the place and it just kept everything consistent. Okay. It, look, the easy fix here is to add a meal. Just, yeah, just Breakfast. to add a meal. Yeah. Add, okay. a, add, a, add a high protein meal. You don't even have to throw any carbs in there because that sometimes can make people feel a little whatever throughout the day. But I would have a, a, a high protein breakfast mm -hmm. and that's it. That, that would add another 50 grams of protein, probably another four or 500 calories and do exactly what you're looking for. I mean, this is okay. also the, this is also the challenge that we, I think you'll, you're going to cross this more than once in your life where there's this like, well, I feel really good as far as the way I'm eating with my fasting and I, yeah. and, I, and I'm a pretty strong, I mean, you're a strong guy for all what you just listed off your lifts. You're probably in pretty damn good shape. You're probably pretty healthy, but I do, I'd like to be a little more a little more jacked. I'd like to have 10, 15 yeah. more pounds of muscle on me. It's like, there's a little give and take here. So, okay, well, if you were my client, I'd be like, well, we can bro, but let's now let's throw out this, you know, fasting thing that works yeah. really well for you. Let's add a meal in there. Let's, let's get big mm -hmm. and let's put some size on. This is going to help us. But then you may find you do that and you feel less balanced. You feel less healthy, but now you're just more jacked. And so there's, there's always like a you little given. You got to kind of choose. Yeah. There's like a pendulum that you sway back and forth. From. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I, I encourage you to explore it, to do it, you know, because you, you want it. But, you know, but then be uh, open-minded and as truly assess like, okay, now I'm 10, 15 pounds more jacked, but do I feel better? Do I, you know, do I feel more balanced? Do I, you know, so... I uh, I, I'll say this though. I don't think you're going to feel worse eating a protein based breakfast. I think you might, if you have like a traditional, you know, carb breakfast, but a protein breakfast stabilizes blood sugar throughout the day. It's going to give you what you're mm -hmm. looking for. So like you could have like a, like a six egg omelet. Um, and that would give you, was that 36 grams of protein? You could throw in some ground beef or some chicken and maybe some spinach for some, some fiber or some vegetable or some berries and you're done. And, and I guess it wouldn't matter what time either. I could just do it like at five in the morning before I go train kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. That would be totally fine. I mean, you know, what I used to do is I would have a pre-made meal and I'd bring it to work with me. And then in between clients is when I would eat the meal. Now this mm, could be hard. This could be hard sometimes, but you know, uh, and I, you know, I haven't talked about this in a long time. If, if you're training clients back to back, it's a good idea to stop your last, the, the, the sessions about 10, five to 10 minutes before they're actually over or before the hour's up to give you that break in between. Mm -hmm. And it's not just for eating. Yes, that's good. You can also eat in that 10 minute period, but you got to kind of gather yourself because if you go client to client to client to client, it's hard to change gears. You know, everybody's different. It's true. And yeah. I, you know, I noticed that when I had like 10 minutes in between clients, I was better for each client. So, mm -hmm. so I used to always do that. Otherwise you go like say bye to your client, hi to mm -hmm. another one. And you just yeah. trained, you know, it Mrs. takes that 10, 15 minutes just to get acclimated with them anyway. Yeah. This is so, what I found too. Yeah, yeah. So I would always end sessions like, you know, like at, at the 10 minutes before, and then that would give me enough time to at the very least center myself for my next client. But you could also eat something that was pre-made. Okay. Thanks guys. I like that. Uh, do you mind if I ask you one more question? Yes. Go ahead. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> this one's uh, for my partner. She has PCOS and she's been working with the hormone specialist, uh, figuring out her testosterone levels and all that stuff. And um, uh, my main question for her is one, if you guys have ever trained a woman that has PCOS and maybe what kind of training style you've done with her, because whenever she lifts really heavy, her cortisol spikes up. Yeah. And of course, because she has PCOS, that, that that's not good for her because it just inflames the body even more. So I'm wondering if you guys have ever had somebody like that before and what you did with her. I have. I've trained quite a few people with that. I always worked in conjunction, though, with a functional medicine practitioner because okay. there's, a lot, there's a lot of moving parts there. It's There's diet, there's sleep, there's stress, lifestyle. And then the workouts as a trainer... It, you know, when I'm training a client, now if I'm talking general, I can give people general advice. Typically with people with PCOS, you want to cut sugar, you want to get really good consistent sleep and the yeah. training, you tend to want to, you know, veer towards less intensity, less volume type of deal. But on a more specific individual basis, I'm watching the client and I'm watching for cues that this is a little too much. And generally speaking, okay. I would do less. Generally speaking. You, you know, generally speaking, a MAPS 15 would probably be a good workout for her. And then I would, mm. I would recommend that she work with a functional medicine practitioner, um, for all that other stuff, because the workout's not going to, you know, it's not going to fix that. It's going to be all that, that other stuff. That's going to make the big difference. 
Yeah, that that that's awesome because I was ma- I was I, we've been experimenting making I've been making her different routines and Maps Fifteen was what I told her to do. Yeah. Um, for like her first phase, and I I told her that I think it would be really good for her because it, it would only be like two exercises. That's right. Um, a day. So yeah. So I I'm glad that you guys said that. So your intuition was right. Yeah. You, you got it, man. And then the hormone specialist. I mean, is it, is it a, a a doctor or is this a functional medicine practitioner? He's a functional medicine practitioner. Oh, perfect. You're good. Yeah, yeah. you're and on then, track, man. Yeah, and then what you should do, Tobias, is work with them. So I would okay. call I would call them and say, hey, here's the workout that we're doing, and I'd like feedback, and let's communicate with each other on a weekly basis um, because then they're going to be able to give you some insight and vice versa. You'll be able to tell him, hey, whatever you're doing – is made her stronger or he can tell you, Hey, I noticed that you, that she, her stress is a little different now. Maybe you should reduce the intensity type of deal. So work with them. Oh, okay. All right. That's perfect. You got it. Thanks guys. No problem, man. Thanks for calling in. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. You Have a good day. You too. Yeah. The, um, uh, two things for trainers. I, you know, I don't think I've ever made that point. If you train Mm -hmm. back, cause the schedule he has is very common. Yeah. Most people work out before noon, so mornings, and then after like three or four. So you know, that, that split shift is very common. And if you have back to back, I would train sometimes 10 people in a day. Mm-hmm. I had to have the 10 minute break in between because I just, it was so changing gears with clients is like, it's uh, not easy. It was it's a different hard people. thing. I had to learn that the hard way. Yeah. Right? And, and you're right. Like it, you figure that out because you, you want to be able to stay because it's such a, um, there's a bit of entertainment there. There's a bit of like, you, you have Chameleon. to be on, yeah. uh, you, you really need that energy now to kind of shift. Cause it does inevitably kind of, you get to a lull at the end of a, a client, especially if they're kind of a difficult client, <laughs> like you need sometimes I'd buffer a 15 minute break, you know, you know, with them, but yeah, it's, it's crucial. Yeah. I want to circle back around though, when you came back and you told him that, you know, he could add a breakfast and I don't think he necessarily would feel uh, feel bad when I what I meant by he's figured out this place of health and you're going to find this yeah. you're going to be here many times in your life isn't necessarily like his digestive it's just that you found a really good balance you you're sleeping you're eating yeah. well you you eat the you eat amount of meals that make you feel good and you're performing pretty damn well in the gym but then you want more for the body yep and so he's in a in a pretty health and I don't think that adding a meal per se is going to necessarily disrupt his health as far as his digestive no objectively adam balance means you're not gaining or losing anything right it means you're balanced so he's in a very healthy place and this happens throughout your journey when you've been lifting for a long time is you get these goals that like you know and 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 many times these are you know physical pursuits that we want and it's like well you know you're you're at a very you know that that triangle right he's in a really good place right now and it's like okay you know, adding another meal every morning or wedging it between clients yeah. isn't necessarily going to affect maybe his digestion, but it is it may also disrupt him rushing around and it's not... Push, I, pushing your body in any direction that's is not right. balanced. That's right. That's, yeah. Our next caller is David from Mexico. David, what's happening? How can we help you? Shit, boys. Hey, it's hey. my favorite time of the week. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. what's up, guy? It actually is because on Saturday is my birthday, so it's a great start to a week, you know? Hell yeah. Oh, happy birthday, man. Yeah, happy birthday. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you, guys. So I've been listening to you guys for a long time since I found you guys through Jordan Shallow back in 2017, maybe. And I've listened to every single one of your episodes. It's a lot of good information. I love everything that you guys put out. I have probably every single one of your programs except maybe PD and cardio, which I'm going to jump eventually on. And I love everything that you guys do. So thank you for that. Thank you, David, man. Thanks. How can we help you, man? I I remember back in, well, back when you guys, the Sal especially used to call the quick quack, quick quack thing. Oh my God. (laughs) Used to call them them memes. Yeah, the memes. Yeah, the memes. The the good old stuff, you know? That's a long time ago. Yeah, it is. Yeah, a long time ago. So I've been listening for a long time. Thank you guys for all that. Hell no problem. Yeah, so now on to my question. Uh, I've been following, uh, well, the last program that, that I followed was Powerlift, and I loved it. I got lots of games. Right now I'm doing Strong, and it's my favorite program by far. I love it. Hmm. So also on a side note, Justin, please convince the guys to do like an all-time unconventional program specifically for that. 
I, I love like it. your style, buddy. Relax. I like your so style. Slow down and wait. Yeah, yeah, hang in there. Hang in there. Calm down, psychic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. You down the road. So yeah. I'm, I'm just waiting for the for the surprise. So okay. currently, I'm running strong, and the, my question has to do with how do you transition from one program to the next one? For example, when power lift, you end with low reps, then you transition to strong with high reps. So it's a, a seamless transition. But for example, if I want to run after strong, uh, for example, aesthetic, it starts with high reps. No, sorry, with low reps. So how do you transition from when a program ends with low reps and the next one begins with low reps? Should I just like extend the the low the high rep phases, or how should I transition from one program to the next when this happens? Good, good question. Really good question. And yeah. you're overthinking it. I, yeah. So when you move from a program to a new program, the programming is different, and so that's like a new phase. Now the rep ranges okay. may be the same, but because the exercises are different and the programming is different, that's still it's still a different program. Now that being said, and e this is like one of my favorite ways to transition from program to program is to do like a symmetry in between them would be a great program or maps 15. Okay. Like one of our different programs is a great program to break up like the heavy strength type, you know, focus workouts. And then lastly, this is another very simple thing to do. If you've been working out consistently and you're just, you just don't take breaks a week off in between programs is a great thing to do. That's just a week off. That's your, your deload right. week. And then you jump into a new program and that's, that's, that would be advisable for most people. It's also okay to run it in reverse. Most programs, I mean, there's some of our programs, I'm trying to think, like, aesthetic and performance do have this kind of, like... You wouldn't want to do performance backwards, right? Yeah, like, that, that That one maybe not so so much, but the rest of them, you could pretty much go the other direction. So there's some times where I'll do that, where I'll just yeah. work it. You could go to anabolic and run it backwards. You go to start at phase three of anabolic, then go to two, then go to one as an option. But this is also one of the perks of how we keep our phases only three to four weeks, because the other thing is even following a five by five strength type of, of routine for six weeks is not going to be detrimental, no. especially when you mix the exercises up yeah. midway through that. Yeah. So it's, okay. it's, a, it's a still a short enough period of time where you're not going to see these adverse effects of running a, a, an extended length of, of strength like that. So you have a lot of different options and it would be, you know, somebody who's an advanced lifter, been lifting for a long time, like you have, I'd play with them. You know, one time I would, okay. I would, I would uh, do what you were saying, like maybe extend a, you know, the 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 previous phase out, so then you can transition or reverse it another time, or just run it the way it is, and then really, you know, go off of how you feel going that way, because none of them are technically the wrong answer. David, you've been with us for so long, and you've been following our programs for so long. Um, you, you you're the kind of person I would say, start experimenting. Start. Right. Start. Yeah, what, what I've done in the past is, like, for example, take phase. If I if I was gonna go uh, through a study, I would take phase three, begin with that, and then start phase one, two, and three. Yeah. That's how I've done it in the sure. past. I, I've done it like once or twice, and I think it has worked okay. But yeah, I yeah. I mean, check. you know, I, again, you know, I, I'm sure you've heard us say this many times. Um, yeah, our, our programs are well written, but they're written for a general audience. There is an avatar, but still, we're writing for a general person. Um, if you've been working out for a long time, this is when you should have the the liberty of modifying, individualizing, mm -hmm. meaning you can change oh. exercises, you could extend uh, phases or decrease phases. Swap out the frequency builder days. Yep. Like I know Adam's mentioned this before, but it's a great way to kind of keep those programs fresh, like taking a mobility session and replacing it with trigger sessions or yep. focus or one of those. Uh, so yeah, you can, you can start kind of playing around with that, with what works best with your body right now. Totally. Yeah. I've learned for myself that mass performance and in particular, the mobility was such a like life changing thing for me that that is forever. Like, I don't care what program I'm running. I, in I incorporate some sort of like mobility days yeah. because that has yeah. complemented my training so much and I need it that I don't care if I'm running any of our other routines uh, that don't have like a high mobility focus. I'm, I'm implementing mobility days into my routine because I've seen such a difference when I do it and when I don't do it. So for example, in strong, in the work days, the work session days, should I just do like half of the exercise and then put some mobility in there? Exa so that's, you, that's, that. that's exactly what I would yeah, do. So when do I that. would, when I ran strong, I didn't do the, the, the work capacity sessions exactly how they're laid out. I put in my yeah. own mobility work because that just, I needed that more than I needed all the, all the work session stuff. So yeah, that's okay, a perfect, that's a perfect example of 
how you could you can modify something specifically to your needs. Okay, makes sense. Makes sense. All right, man. Very now cool. you said can, I, can I add a little bit? It, it, it is not exactly in the question, but it kind of has to do with the transition of the faces. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. sure. Uh, I I am kind of reverse dieting or kind of bulking, and I try to add like fifty calories a week. But I'm thinking if if I uh, if I change face or if I change program, can I do a bigger jumps in calories? Say a hundred, hundred and fifty when I change programs. Is that like a good good idea or not? Typically, I like to do bigger jumps when I change phases or programs, but your calorie jumps are so small, you'd be fine doing that no matter what. Yeah. I mean, going from right. 50 to 100 it's a week, not I mean, that's, that's, not, drastic, that's not a huge, huge yeah. difference. How, what, what are your calories at right now about how much you weigh right now? Uh, I'm around uh, 95 kilos with like 205, and I'm at around 3,400 calories. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're a good yeah, place. Yeah, yeah. 50 calories will be like nothing, so you could totally add that. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, could bump, you could bump that. Makes sense. Well, thank you guys a lot. David, All right, David. David, yeah. since you've been with us for so yeah. long, because I recognize you, you've been on our forum forever too. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You said I, the I, only programs you don't have are cardio and PED. I'll just send those to you. Just make them complete. Well, thank you guys a lot. Yep. You got it, man. Yeah, man. Thank you. Okay, Thanks, David. Yeah. Thank Thanks you. for supporting us. Goodbye. Man. Thanks. Yeah, if you again, this is to anybody who follows our programs. The longer you do them, the more um, the more you can change them, the more you can individualize them because you start to figure things out. You see, you have to follow good programming first to start to figure these things out. Mm -hmm. Then you know what it feels like, and then you start to modify because the best workout for you is always individualized. Always, it's always going to be that way. So yeah. that's the that's where you should go eventually. I'd be curious at this point, like how many people are like that out there that you know experienced lifters that have gone through pretty much most of our programs because you know we've been doing this to what like six seven years at this point yeah. uh to where like more of these uh you know type of individuals I, I love that you can come back and modify what we have already kind of laid out and i think that there's always like ways that you can adjust things and make it individual completely. yeah it's a it's a challenging thing for us to communicate because i actually it'd be interesting to get a survey and see if most because i think most people don't follow it to a t and don't listen to us yeah Oh, that's I think, the majority. Yeah, I think sure. most people th oh, think they know better. Yeah. And like, oh, and they're, they're the ones more. right now listening. We're like, oh, cool, I'll change everything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so like, I'm really careful about how we communicate that totally. because you know, here you have someone who's really advanced, right? Been lifting for a very long time. Like, And we know, I recognize and, him. He's been and with still, us still like, you know, following it closely to a T like that. Yeah. I mean, I still recommend most people. I know that if I go through one of our programs and follow to a T, I still benefit tremendously from it. Sure. Because Good point. I don't care how long you've been doing this for, sure. you have your own tendencies that you do and you neglect and you leave out and so there's tremendous value and I don't give a shit how advanced you are to running through these things the way they're laid out and then of course you I mean it's like uh you know Doug would appreciate like a recipe for cook cooking you know what I'm saying like mm. you 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 follow the recipe to make it make it correctly and then over time you adjust it to your liking right so yep. the same thing goes for I think training programs like follow it to a T and then you can start to adjust it to That's your liking right. now for those of you that wants to try our programs uh but wants to invest less go to Instagram Mind Pump Media, for less than $5 a month, literally less than $5 a month, you'll get a brand new workout every single week presented to you. So again, it's Mind Pump Media on Instagram. 